This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, the Holy Spirit led me to read about John's John preaching the baptism of repentance. The Holy Spirit led me to read about John preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. It's found in Mark chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 and uh, Luke chapter 3 verse 3. Okay, but um, in this, I was just reminded that um, baptism of water is just an outward demonstration or an outward symbol of an inward change. And the inward change begins with repentance. Pastors can preach the word all they want to people. But unless someone prepares the way for the word to take ground in their heart through confession of their sins and repentance, then the path is not, the, the way it has not been prepared for Jesus and the path has not been made straight. Confession, repentance, that is what prepares the way of the Lord. That is what make his path straight. He follows the pathway of confession and confession of sins and repentance. That prepares the way for him. That was the symbolism of John the Baptist being a voice in the wilderness crying out, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Okay. And I'm not sure why the Holy Spirit shared this with me. I don't know if it's because, um, I don't know if it's, if it's because lately I've been hearing people talk about the choir preparing the way for the word of God. I mean, the, the choir can set the atmosphere of praise that the choir can set the atmosphere for the, for the assembly of people to yield up to God, which is he is the, the breath that he's given us to us to give that back to him and praise. But the, the thing that really prepares the way for the word of God to take fertile ground and to bear much fruit is confession of sins and repentance, the baptism of repentance. That that really prepares the heart. That really makes a pathway for Jesus Christ, okay? Um, and so with that being said, the Holy Spirit was also reminding, well, the Holy Spirit gave me this message for leaders. How can one lead unless they know the starting point? How can one lead unless they know the starting point? In other words, how can you lead people to eternal life unless you know where they are currently? That was the whole reason that Jesus had to come into the world because he had to come and be in this world and be able to empathize with us and see how it was here so that he can properly serve as high priest for us, okay? So there are some people in the church who are already indwelt with the Holy Spirit. You know, the Father and the Son have already made their temple um, a dwelling place for themselves. And then there are some people who are interested or who, yeah, who are interested in following and walking with Jesus, but they have not yet been indwelt with the Holy Spirit, okay? So, um, I pray that leaders would just, um, pray to God and get an answer on this for themselves. But again, the Holy spirit put it on my heart to come on here and remind leaders that the way, the method that the way for the Lord is made and the path, his path is made straight is by the baptism of repentance, the confession of sins. Okay. And, um, that in order to lead someone, you have to know where they're starting. Like when you're in the mall and you look on that map, you can look all day to the point where you want to go. But if you don't know where you are currently, then you can't get there. You can know where it is, but unless you know where you are, you can't get there. So if uh, someone has been sent to lead a people, you have to know where the people are in order to lead them to, to the destination. And, um, um, in the video that I just posted a little bit ago, 
one of the things that the Holy Spirit highlighted to me is that the disciples had been walking with Jesus for somewhere around three years. And it wasn't until Luke chapter 24, verse 49, when he told them, he told them to tarry into the city of Jerusalem because the time had come for him to send them the father's promise, which was the Holy Spirit. He told them to stay there until they were in due with his power from on high. OK, so even though the disciples had been walking with Jesus for three for somewhere around three years and they were walking with the word and the word was living amongst them and with them they had not received the spirit of the Lord in them, okay? Okay? So there are some people in the church, they've been reading the word, they've been studying the word, but they have not yet received the Holy Spirit. And then there are some people who probably haven't been studying the word, they've been hearing the word and sermons and stuff, but they have not yet received the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, one thing that I just thought was interesting that I'm just gonna say um, was that, when John's mother, Elizabeth, was receiving the instructions from the angel about her son, it was said that he was going to be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. That was just interesting to me. But, um, yes, leaders, pre please pray to the Father to understand the people who you have been sent to teach and to lead to more effectively lead them and also seek the Holy Spirit's guidance on preaching more about the baptism of repentance and the importance to confess sins in order to prepare the way for Jesus Christ, especially in this season where people, um, may be led into the church, okay? Uh, there are seasons when you preach to people who are indwelled about discipleship and stewardship and ministry and things like that, but then there are seasons where you have to take time to preach to people who have not yet received the Holy Spirit. And in order to receive the Holy Spirit to um, make the way for Jesus to send the Holy Spirit, or for Jesus to pray to the Father to send the Holy Spirit, um, a way has to be made for Jesus Christ, who is the word, through confession of sins and repentance. So, Father God, I thank you for your word, oh Lord. I thank you for your leaders, Lord. And I thank you for all those who are in the body of Christ and those who are coming into the body of Christ, Father God. I thank you for remission of sins, through the baptism of repentance, oh God. And I thank you for those who you have raised up to preach the baptism of repentance. I just thank you for being good. In Jesus' name, amen.